Hey there, it's Dawn. All right, so today I want to talk about the Liat New Guards and um, how to repair them or fix the fit on them. On any safety gear, one of the, the most important things is that it has to fit properly. You have to take the time to make sure that they fit properly. All right, so what I've done here is I had him put on my liats that were already fitted to me and he said that um, that fit was just about right and so I know that I can do the same measurements um, for his and then what I've done is I've gone ahead and strapped this down to where I think it should be and I can make it a little bit tighter so I have this strap and then I'm going to wrap it around and this is where the the hook part is and this should strap down somewhere around here and so you can see how much basically how much extra strap we have so i just need um so now i know that i want to put the the other part the loop part i want that somewhere around here so i'm going to mark this and this is um, this is just a chalk um, a fabric chalk, so it'll wash and uh, wipe right off. It's just chalk. But now I know that I want the the loop part over there, and then I want the hook part to be about here. Oops. So I'm just gonna mark this. And so that is basically going to tell me that this is going to be where the new um, hook part is. So I'm going to cut out, I'm going to be cutting out this much of it over here. And then I, that's how you do the sizing. And I would just do that for all the other straps. See how, see how loose it is? It's just totally, totally loose. All right. So that's how you get the right fit. You just snug it up to where it should be, mark it and cut it or whatever, and move the, the Velcro. I have all the straps marked with the fabric chalk. And I have um, replacement, brand new replacement Velcro here. This is one inch but um, it does have the little border on either side so you can go a little bit larger um, if you want and then this is oh god i forgot the size of this one but this is bigger than an inch <laughs> and um, it's this stuff should be in my amazon storefront if you wanted to get this this is just replacement elastic and this is replacement velcro or hook and loop um, i also have small scissors um, this thingy for the thread cutter uh, or seam cutter and then large scissors and then of course my sewing machine um so i think those are all of the tools that i need and i'll show you how you take out the velcro each strap so this is the top strap right now is going to have the hook part and the wait hook part and loop part so first I'm just, oh, look how dusty that is. You know what's great for removing that dust is um, uh, uh, air compressor. Uh, air compressor at 120 PSI will get uh, dust and dirt out of, um, out of fabrics. So you just find your edge over here. You can check different edges and see if there's an edge that is particularly loosened up already. And you can see that all they're doing is one single straight stitch down the line. So, then you can slip this in. Oh my gosh, trying to do this through the camera is a little weird. So just slip it through that and cut. And now it, it, it'll get easier as you get everything loosened up over here. Um, now the proper way, well, another way to use this is actually to 
hook in using like this and then you just it, rip the seam ripper is what this is and then you just rip the whole seam like that by sliding it through um i tend not to do that with um safety gear uh especially i don't know it there there's a higher chance of you also catching something else that you don't want and ripping through that so Oh my gosh, I'm try trying to decide if I should like look over and around the camera or if I um, should go through the camera and it is um, not easy. There we go. Now we can really... So yeah, this does take time because I, I don't want to damage anything. And my the seam raper is so old. Now, if you don't have a seam ripper, you can also use like an X-Acto knife. Those work really well as well. Maybe even, I don't know, I was gonna say like, you know, those letter opener stuff. But, and then for those sewers out there that go, oh, why don't you do it the other way and just go all the way down? It's like, I know, I know, but like, I just don't wanna take the chance that and I don't, I'm not really a sewer. Um, I got into, one of my hobbies that I got into was fixing vintage sewing machines. And in order to do that, I would repair them, restore them, fix them all up, um, all that good stuff. Then one of the things I'd have to do is test them. So, you know, I learned how to sew um, by fixing up machines, but my passion isn't sewing. Um, it's just fixing up machines. And then I was like, Oh, but since I have a little tiny bit of sewing skills, um, I was like, oh, I can use that to repair my gear when they go bad. And then since then, I've been um, helping repair other people's gear as well. And I can tell you that I've been doing this and uh, for you know a few different people, and um, it absolutely is the fix. I mean, all it needs to be is fit right and if you can do a custom fit that is the best uh, almost done. there we go we're done so now all we have to do is go through and pick out all of these loose threads and this velcro can be reused now what i was doing earlier was i was um, checking to see how good the grip on this is if the grip is not that good, or if the grip on, um, if the grip isn't that good, where's the other piece? Oh, that grip is actually pretty good. All right, so this grip is good. If the grip wasn't good, then I would just toss this piece and, um, and uh, replace it with a new one, that's all. So then after this, um, I need to go through and pick out all of the loose threads, right? So I'm gonna go do that. But the next step is to take this one off as well and then find my marks and then re-sew according to the marks at the new spot. All right, so um, now I am going to fold the end here. I already cut the excess strap. Fold the end over here and I have my uh, hook part all set into the right position and I'm gonna sew this on. Um, I have the, the end here folded because that is how, that's how Leah does it. So we will do what they do.
cut out all of the cut off all of your loose threads. There you go. So that is the hook part. Now I just need to sew on. So this is going to fold over and then stick over here. And here is the next mark. And here is this focal. So I want this to be around here. And then we have all of this length and that will be all of the adjustments that he has. Should I show you this part too? Sure, why not? You can always, um, what is it called? Fast forward or whatever if you don't want to see this part. Oh, so we got this new one put on. All right, so when you cut the end of your elastic, you also want to singe the end. That will keep it from unraveling. Just a little singe. I always go overboard when I play with fire. I like fire. <sighs> but um, just singe the ends, and then that way it won't come undone. And for this strap, look at how much length I had to cut off. Um, Brian actually like triple looped this around in order to get it right. And uh, it's just so much length. So I'll show you the progress so far. Look at this. This is what I've done already. And this is a proper, <laughs> this is a proper length now, right? Doesn't this look familiar? Looks like when it was new sort of, right? Um, not having like three, four loops and have, oh my goodness, uh, the other strap that I have done now is this one. So this one's all nice and done. And now we are working on this bottom one over here. So the straps are all done. Um, and now they look more like normal straps, which should only be about that long instead of how they were before where they were just like super duper long from just being stretched out over time time and crashes and all like all of that stuff um so after you adjust the straps now we're going into repairs but i did the repair on um, this strap already that was completely cut off uh, you can also buy these on amazon they do sell these and i don't remember what else it, it was something like this and something else but it comes in a kit as a replacement um replacement liat uh, knee strap thingy tabs and stuff so you can purchase those and then the next thing would be 
to get rid of all of this stuff. I mean, you don't have to. I know plenty of guys that don't. But um, for me, this is scratchy and everything, and I don't like it. So it's just a matter of dremeling them out, um, sanding it down. I try not. To, I try to only take off this excess stuff on top. So if I've, I've already done this portion where this was actually came all the way out and I reshaped it and everything. And then this actually feels smooth now because the um, heat gun, the heat gun will take care of all of these little tiny flyaways. You hit it with heat, all these tiny little pieces of plastic will melt and you can very easily just rub it over with your hand and um, smooth it out. So after I use the Dremel to take off the excess, then um, I'll smooth out some of the bigger scratches and then I'll hit it with the heat gun to just really get everything nice and smooth afterwards. If you want, I mean, some of these are deeper scratches and then there's dirt and stuff embedded in it. So if you really wanted to really make it look nice, you could take all of that down back to the white and repaint this and um, really make it smooth and you could make it look great but that would take off a lot more material and if looks is not important to you then um, I'd recommend not to do that just because I, you want to leave as much material as possible but um, you know so anyways your personal choice. All right, so these are all done. Um, smoothed everything out. Uh, probably could do better, but I really don't think Brian cares. I don't even think that he expected me to do this much. So um, I'm not gonna worry about it. Straps are good. They will now be tight. <clears throat> all of the major damages has been kind of corrected, smoothed out. These are still totally serviceable, totally works and doesn't look all that bad. So well, there you go, thanks for joining me and I hope this helps. You take care of your gear as well. Um, you can do this same stuff with all of your um, gear, like your wrist guards, elbow guards, um, anything like that. So just some basic uh, maintenance stuff. Be sure to check after every crash um, that your straps are still good. Oh, one little note. Um, one, I, I said before about how I'm not a fan uh, uh, of, of all the Band-Aid fixes. This is one of them, is to add another spot here. And I said that um, it's, it's fine, I'm fine with that if you can at least make a little keyhole that it can lock into so you're not losing the lock feature. Um, if the Band-Aid still retains all the safety, then it's, to me, that's, that's a fine Band-Aid. But if the um, but if not, then no, right? So hooking it into one of these, I don't think is a good band aid because that um, eliminates the safety feature of it. The other band aid that I'm not a fan of is crossing the the straps, um, the bottom straps. I know that is a band aid, but oftentimes when you're doing that, it means that the well here, each of these straps, each of these three straps has a function and oftentimes like many many times i've had it happen to me where you crash at one spot and one strap gets completely cut off when that happens you still have two other straps that are totally functional and will still try their best to keep keep everything on and still and good for you when you cross the straps what happens is one you are combining the two straps into one and you're having one center point in this in the in one point in the center here and two often means that you're crossing them because both of those straps are not functional and strong standing alone which means that you cross the straps if one of those two straps gets cut and that also there's greater odds that one of the two of the three straps you have on here is gonna get cut, then um, one, you are increasing the odds of failure, and two, if one of those two straps are cut, the other strap will fail as well because the other strap wasn't strong on its own. You need see what I'm saying? So now you've increases your odds of um, a failure if 
one of those. I don't know. I'm talking in circles now because I don't know how to say this clearly, but hopefully um, it makes sense. When they stand alone and are tight on their own, then any one of these straps getting cut, the other two will step in. If you tie in together these two straps to where these two straps need to be together to be strong, then if one gets cut or the other gets cut, then the, you know, the other one isn't going to work as well, sort of thing. So I'm not a fan of that. Um, uh, one good mod that you can do, uh, Roger does this on his, is he adds silicone to the inside, and that adds grip, um, and that can help as well. I found that I don't need any of those band-aids as long as I make these uh, straps custom fit and strong. The stri you know, every time you hear what's wrong with these, the, the complaint is that the straps are too loose so they slip. Or they just say, oh, they slip and move. Well, why do they slip and move? The only reason is because they're too loose. So all you have to do is make them tight and then they do work. They work just fine, and this has been tested, crash tested, and proven in real life situations, and proven to be true. So there you go, hope that helps, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.